Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 2 Biology Area Study 1. Today we are looking at patterns of inheritance. So we'll be looking at pedigree charts and how we can identify patterns of inheritance from them. So looking at autosomal and sex-linked inheritance. We'll be looking at predicting outcomes for a monohybrid cross um, and a test cross. And we'll be looking at how we can predict genetic outcomes for two genes if they're linked or a sort independently. So we'll start off with pedigree charts. Now there are five major patterns of inheritance that we are going to be looking at today. Um, just to identify first off the important features of a pedigree chart, um, we identify a male using a square and a female using a circle. If it is colored in, we say that that individual is affected by whatever trait we are discussing in that particular problem. Um, we also are able to represent generations. So each row will account for a new generation. Um, so here we have Roman numerals to decide our generation. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have our specific individual one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six again, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we start every row counting um, from number one, okay? And so we might represent a particular individual, say we're talking about this individual here. They are part of um, oh, generation three and they would be individual number eight. So that's how we would identify that particular individual there. All right. In terms of a mating line, so a line between two individuals suggests that they have um, a partnership with one another, a line coming down from that would show that these um, one, two, three, four individuals are their offspring. Okay, so going down, we show offspring. And um, we might add an individual. So that individual I spoke about earlier would be a partner that has married or become part of that family. In terms of genotypes and phenotypes and how they're written, especially when we talked about sex-linked inheritance, we write them this way. So an affected female might be lowercase b, lowercase b, and the two Xs show those two X chromosomes. Unaffected female, but being a carrier, we would show as a capital B and a lowercase b for a recessive trait. Unaffected female would be capital B, capital B. Affected male would be lowercase b, with a Y because he's a male and unaffected would be an uppercase B. So this is how we would show those phenotypes and those genotypes as well. In terms of what we're going to be looking at today, though, is the inheritance patterns. So in determining the inheritance patterns, there's a few sort of key features that might represent these. And I've taken this example from Ed Rollo because it really nicely summarizes what we're talking about here. So for a trait to be autosomal dominant, it means that both parents are affected. The offspring, however, may be unaffected. Okay. If neither parent is affected, then the offspring are also not going to be affected. If an offspring is affected, they have to have an affected parent. Okay. So for autosomal dominant, if offspring is affected, say this individual here is affected, both of his parents are also affected. He just needs at least one though. So here, both these kids are affected. They have one parent that is affected and this cannot skip a generation. So an example is Huntington's disease or achondroplasia, which is dwarfism. Autosomal recessive, however, is where if both parents are affected, the offspring must also be affected, okay? But if neither parent is affected, then the offspring may be unaffected as well. If an offspring is affected, then they have to have um, an affected parent. Um, they may have an unaffected parent, sorry, and the trait can skip a generation here. So with number three, an offspring is affected. So here we have an affected offspring, but they have unaffected parents, okay? So it may or may not be. And an example of this is cystic fibrosis. With X-linked dominant, um, if a male is affected, his mother has to be affected. Um, and if a male is affected, his 
daughters will also be affected. So they're the two giveaways here. If a female is unaffected, then her father must also be unaffected. Okay. If a female is unaffected, her sons must also be unaffected. So this one's a really easy one to tell when you have your male and females because you can identify it based on these patterns. And the trait here, because it is dominant, cannot skip a generation. Um, in terms of using this, if it's a sex-linked inheritance, it can't be confirmed with certainty using just the pedigree, but we can show that it is a possibility to be like this. So an example would be fragile X syndrome. For X-linked recessive, if a female is affected, her father has to be affected. If a female is affected, her sons must also be affected. So this is another one where we can use the male and female being sex-linked or X-linked. We can use these patterns to help us. If a male is affected, however, his mother may be affected and the trait here can skip a generation being recessive. An example is red-green colour blindness. And for Y-linked, Y-linked is very easy to tell in a pedigree because only the males can show the trait and all males in a lineage are going to show that same phenotype and it cannot skip a generation. So here we can see all the males in this phenotype in this um, pedigree have been affected by that phenotype and we've got some examples here so y chromosome infertility is one of those examples in terms of a monohybrid cross um, we did talk a little bit about this in the previous video and i did link in the description box an example of how this works so if you'd like to look at that i think that would be great um, but basically we have say two parents we have their um, genotypes here, so their alleles will be given through their gametes. Um, so this male, we have an X with a lowercase b, a Y. We've got here X with an uppercase b and a lowercase b. And so we can kind of like a multiplication grid, figure out um, what's going to go in our missing boxes and then we can write down what those phenotypes would be and create what we call a ratio at the end to identify affected versus unaffected. A test cross is something that can be used to determine the genotype of one of our originals. So say we have a black sheep, but we don't know if they're heterozygous or homozygous dominant, we could cross that black sheep with a homozygous recessive. And this is what a test cross is. And then determined by the offspring, we can identify what that might have been. Okay. So here, if the unknown genotype is homozygous dominant, then all of the offspring have to be black. Whereas here, if the unknown um, genotype is heterozygous, then half of the offspring would um, theoretically be black and half would be white. In terms of predicting outcomes, um, this gives us an idea of how we can determine maybe a possible ratio for what those offspring might be. Um, in terms of linked genes, they are genes that are found close together on the same chromosome and they're likely to be inherited together as well. This is why you might also notice people with blonde hair often have blue eyes, with dark hair often have brown eyes, that kind of thing. Um, genes that are located more closely together on the same chromosome are known as linked genes and this means that during meiosis, because they're on the same chromosome, they're going to be inherited together and they're not likely to separate during independent assortment. Okay, But occasionally they can be through crossing over. So it's not necessarily that we'll follow that pattern, um, but it is likely. Over here, we also have a dihybrid cross where we're looking at two um, genes as well. So two different characteristics are being identified. And an example of pea plants is something that you may have looked at in class. Um, you can pause the video here and have a look, but basically we determine all of the possible outcomes from mum, all the possible outcomes from dad, and we can cross those together. And we'll end up with what we call a 9 by 3 by 3 by 1 ratio if both parents are heterozygous for both um, 
traits here. If you have any questions regarding patterns of inheritance, please leave them in the comments below and I'm happy to answer those. Otherwise, have a great day.